Is, should we get started? Okay, my name is Morten Fries Olivarius, and I'm a PhD student at CBS. Uh, my background is uh, I'm a neurobiologist, so I work in collaboration with the Lidl Hospital. I uh, do uh, neuroimaging of uh, people in creative situations, and my research question is what's happening in the brain when we are creative, and what enables us to be creative, and why are some people more creative than others? Um, but before we start, we should just make sure we're on the same path. So what does it mean to be creative? Have you been over this term? Creativity, the definitions and... Uh... Uh, no, nope, you'll be doing it from scratch. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, when you read uh, the creative literature, there's almost a new definition in each article you read. Um, but but uh, luckily, most people agree that for, in order for something to be creative, it has to be original and useful. So if you just produce some very highly original ideas, uh, but they're not useful, they're not creative. So if you look at schizophrenic people or psychopaths, they come up with some very, very uh, original ideas, but they're hardly ever useful. Uh, but one of the, the definitions that I would like to take you through is the one by Mitnick. And he says that when we are in a creative situation, it's the forming of associative elements into a new combination. And what he includes that uh, most people don't is that the more mutually remote these uh, elements are, the new combination, the more we say is creative. And in fact, when we analyze creative ideas, a lot of people think that you just get an idea uh, from the sky and it's something completely new. But when we analyze the elements of each idea, it's always something that we knew before. Let's just put together in a new combination. So if we look at Einstein's theory of relativity, he didn't invent the concept of energy, mass, or speed of light. <laughs> Rather, he combined these old ideas in a original and useful way. I just have to blow my nose. You can hear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One second. All right, we'll try again. Is everyone uh, following this? Yes? What do you mean by useful? I mean, it's a very good question, and there's a lot of debate about that, because if you take art, is that useful? Uh, what? So that's a, it's a huge flaw in the, the way we define creativity. But the question is, how would you else define it? What do you think is creative? It's very, very difficult to pinpoint exactly what elements make something creative. Uh, but what, what I think Mednick is right about, when we see a solution that we think, ah, this is highly creative, it's usually because the elements in the solution is very far remote associated. It's something that we wouldn't think of, and therefore we think, wow, that's creative. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, of uh, course. Quite often it's also suggested that it's uh, only useful if it's defined as useful by an expert in that domain. So if it's in pump design, it's useful or novel as long as somebody, an expert in that domain, says, yes, that is useful, applicable, or novel. So that's sometimes how it's done. Yeah. Uh, and that leads us to the question of how, how should we study creativity? And there's two, uh, yeah, there's more than, than these, but this is a major issue. Should we look at the process of being creative or the product? And that's, these two terms, is we can look at trade creativity or achievement creativity. And trade creativity means it's our ability to be creative. So this is something that everyone in, in the population has. We all have trade creativity to some extent. Some are more than others, of course. But we all have this possibility of being creative. We're, from nature, we, have, we can take something we know and put together new combinations. And the other way of looking at it is to look at the social success of this, or the product of this ability. And only few people manage to achieve this. To, and these are the ones we say, this is the creative experts. How do you think we should uh, look at creativity? Just, do you think it's about the product or the process? The thing is, if we imagine uh, some guy living in a cave, he's never seen society, 
and he sits down and gets this great idea and he invents the airplane, right? The people who's ever helped, sorry, who's advocating the last theory, they will say, this is not creative, it's already been done. They will have no social success. But if we look at what's happening in the brain, as that's my point of view, what happened when he created that airplane is highly creative, right? So what I'm talking about today is, is trade creativity, the ability we have to be creative. It doesn't matter if this has been done before. If you get an idea and you figure out, oh, someone already got this idea, it's still creative, right? So I'm just going to tell you some basic about how the brain works. Uh, I'm not, you might know this, uh, it's very intuitive, but our brain primarily works with the associations. Every word I'm saying is giving you associations that you can relate to, something you've experienced before, and that's why you can understand what I'm saying. So if I say the word apple, we all have an uh, idea of what an apple is, what it tastes like, what it smells like. But if, for example, I take the genre rock in music, we would have very different ideas of exactly what is rock. So our associations to a concept is also different. Um, but if I say, now I just said apple. All you, when I say the word, it gets activated in our neural network. And all of you will have uh, different images of what an apple looks like. Some will think about apple cider. Some will think about last summer they were out picking apples. You can feel you have an image, but they will all be different. And what, what we think happens is when I say the word apple, the concept gets activated and there's an activation spread throughout our association network. And other related concepts, concepts will also be activated. Does that make sense? This is very important and very basic. And this activation spread falls as a function of associative distance. So the more remote uh, other concepts are, the less activated they get. And we know this from, uh, for example, priming literature. If I say apple and I give you a question where you have to answer banana, you can do that very fast. If, if I've said apple before, you can do it even faster. If you had to answer ladder or something that's completely unrelated, your response would be slower. So we can see if we activate something, anything associated is already uh, activated in the brain. It's a very good system because it makes a lot of sense that we need something that's associated to the situation we're in. Um, but there's been a lot of studies about this, uh, that perhaps this association spread uh, is different from people who's highly creative. And for example, this is a graph that uh, if we give the word table and ask people to come up with anything you can think of uh, uh, related to it, less creative people will have a, what we call a steep associative gradient. They will uh, be able to come with a, a few very close associated responses and then their response rate will drop quite rapidly. Uh, but it seems that highly creative people, they have a more flat association gradient they, they have more access to dis distance uh, concepts. And uh, what you should notice is that it seems like highly creative people have comparable access to both closely remote uh, and remote associated uh, concepts. Does that make sense? And what the theory behind this and what you should notice today is that it is, it's, we think that it's in these associ uh, remote associations that creative solutions occur. And the more access you have to, to a remote association, the greater the number, the higher the probability of reaching a creative solution. That's the theory behind this, and that's basically the basic theory in all creative literature. Uh, test, when we test, we th test how uh, many associations do we have access to, we call it uh, divergent thinking, all kind of other things. Uh, but if we look to my field, uh, in Neuroscience, this is not the full story about how the brain works. Um, it's not that it's not true, but there's another process very, very important. If, from what I just told you now, can anyone see a problem with this theory? With this theory? Yes? Um, I think that it's, you cannot define less and highly creative people. I think that uh, it's, it's not directly one, two categories. Of course, uh, you're right that that's difficult, but I, this is rated on, on, on creative work. For example, uh, if, I don't remember how they did it in, in this paper, but 
you can rate these people uh, highly creative when they're making stories. Uh, so this is based on work that people do. But you could, of course, argue with this. But what I want to get to is that everything is associated with everything. So if this was the only theory and the only way it worked, we would go completely nuts. Because I would say Apple, you would sit now and think about the last time you picked Apple, you would think about Apple Pie. It would be impossible to listen to all the other things I'm saying. So we have another mechanism, it seems, that controls what is relevant and what is not relevant. So we have some system that inhibits wrong associations. So we just look at, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but just the basic way uh, the, our neural, neurons work. So if we just take the primary neurons, this is if I take a pen and push my, my skin. We have these uh, mechanoreceptors in the skin, and the more stretched they are, the more signal they get. This equals the theory you saw, and this is the signal that would be sent to the brain. But our brain doesn't work that way. We have a brilliant system. If we go into the next layers of the neurons, we have this system that if one neuron get a, a signal, it will inhibit neighbor neurons. Right? And they will also inhibit this. So the neuron with the strongest, strongest signal will inhibit all neighbors. And that will give this kind of signal, right? So this one is the middle one, and these are the ones outside. So they don't look like what we normally see. They have this negative, and there's a much more precise system of pinpointing exactly where am I being touched. And it's the same the way our associations work, our brain works, in, in a lot of sense. Uh, normally, I would give a lot of examples, but you probably know these illusions that these gray colors are not the same, and it's because of this inhibiting system. I just jump through this one. You can all see a lot of uh, black dots in the, in the crosses, and they disappear as soon as you look at them, right? Otherwise, you should come and see me. <laughs> uh, and it's due to the same system. Uh, I won't explain it. Here you see a lot of white stripes, and here you see black stripes. They don't exist, of course. And it's all part of this illusion, and it's due to this inhibiting system. So if we look at the cognitive inhibition, so when we make a certain in our associations network, as I just explained, we have this system that inhibits irrelevant information. So you all know this situation where we're trying to, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say that this is a really brilliant system, because if we inhibit stuff that's uh, um, Irrelevant, we, we save a lot of energy, we don't have to think about a lot of things that's not necessary. But it's not a perfect system. And if you, you all know the situation where you have to uh, remember what grandmother's uh, maiden name was. Uh, you know this situation uh, where you can remember a name and you have it just on the tip of your tongue, uh, but you can't say it. You all know this situation, right? And it's due to this system. So the idea is that if you make a search and you hit a name that's very closely associated but incorrect, then the, you can come in the situation where the correct answer is inhibited. Uh, and the uh, way I like to think about it is, is it's kind of a flashlight effect. We all know that when we're outside at night, if we turn on a flashlight, you have the center cone where everything is bright, and around it's even darker than if you didn't turn on the flashlight. And it's kind of the same when we make searches in, a, in our memory system and our associations. So we inhibit anything that's uh, uh, related. Uh, and one fun thing is that we can uh, artificially induce this, that if we make problem solving, if we formulate the problem in a certain way, that uh, within the question it gives you strong associations to something that's closely related to the answer but incorrect, we can inhibit the answer so you either is have more difficulty, uh, are slower to say it, or it's even completely inhibited. And we also know it within a response competition. It's known in, re in retrieval, induced forgetting, mental fixation, even design fixation. Um, so you could say that if you would look at designers, when they have to design a new product, they have often a lot of associations to this product, and therefore it's very difficult to break out of the box because you inhibit other uh, associations. Uh, there was, there's been an, uh, a study that's not with design, but if, we, if I were to ask you to draw animals living on a foreign planet, 
it, this has been have been done, and it's, it's all it's very difficult to break out of not having two legs, standing up, having eyes, having ears. All the things we know is extremely difficult to think out in a completely new way, because if we have too many associations to something, it's, it inhibits our ability to think out of it. Does it make sense? Uh, I'll just try to show you uh, with this called a response competition. So now I'm going to show you a word here, but I'm going to control your closest association. I'm going to show you a blogger word first. And the fun thing about this is that they're not, is, uh, meaning, their meaning is not associated. They're just associated in form, but it will still make a block. So uh, when I, if you have the answer, don't tell it. Just give the others uh, two seconds to think about it. So the blocker word is analogy, right? Analogy. What does it say here? Now you can say if one, anyone has the solution? Yes? Analogy. Yes. But can you all feel that even though you know you're not supposed to look at it, you're not supposed to think analogy, it's still difficult to control. We can take the next one. What, is this? what should it say here? You can say it if you have it. Anyone? Yeah. Baggage. Yes. And the next one? The fun thing is that you don't even have to look at them. Your brain still sees them. It still blocks you. Just have them on the side. Yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> But we don't have to go through all of them. The next one is catalog, and they just go on. The idea is I want to show you that this, even though you know about it, is very difficult to inhibit, uh, to not be affected by. So they have shown that this implicit memory uh, make a block of the, uh, the cause this inappropriate response. And it's been shown that even though you know this, we cannot escape it. It's just the way our brain works. Uh, we'll just do this one and more uh, other kind of problem. So you have to man, this is eight coins. You can move only two coins, and you have to make an arrangement that every coin touches exactly three other coins. Anyone has a solution? We have one in the back. The two middle ones, these two? Yeah, these two? <laughs> you have to come up and draw, I think. Yeah, I can't hear you. So this, this one only touches two, and the same with this one. Anyone else has a solution? The thing is, what I just told you, the exactly same is happening. We are so used to looking at this in 2D that all our associations on a computer screen or this is in 2D. And you know it's coins. You can just, everyone tries this whenever we do this. People try around and there's no solution. But it's coins, just put them on top of each other. But the point is that we get very fixated in the way, in the way we think about this. So let's try this one. Now you're a bit smarter. Can you solve this? You have to use four straight lines that connect all the dots, and you cannot move your pen off the paper.
Okay, I'll give you the solution. The thing is that when yeah, we can just, it's like this. And it's the same, we see this square, and actually uh, our brain will make the association that it's a box, and we're not used to thinking out of this box. Can you all see the triangles? They're not there. It's when we see something that uh, small hints of a, uh, of a form, we'll automatically make the association, we will make this box. Uh, but a colleague of mine made this, uh, uh, where there were some children pr present, and one of the little guys said, I can do it with three lines. Can anyone think of a solution with three lines? Only children can think this way. <laughs> it's not in the articles, uh, we've only seen this in real life, so. <laughs> but then another, another one of the children said, I have a solution with one line. Can you think of that one? <laughs> <laughs> so the point is that uh, now you're going on to do the next exercise in just uh, a few minutes. Try to think about this. Try to think about, try not to get, become inhibited about the thoughts you already have. Maybe perhaps we should, is there any questions about this? It's really important, our whole point with this, uh, one second, experiment is that we want to show that this teaching actually has an effect. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just wasting your time. So we really want, so now you know about this, how it functions, and we really want you to use this knowledge to uh, make the other better solutions. Yeah, you had a question? Yeah, how, how important is the expectation of your meaning? I mean, I was expecting that you would say this could be a wrong solution, um, and I would expect that. But that's exactly the same, you, you have this, so, uh, your first instincts say that it would be that way, but you have no, no uh, reason to think that way. Because we're so used to thinking in the same patterns over and over again that we take a lot of things for granted that we don't have to. And that's when you do the next exercise, don't take anything for granted in your way of thinking. Right? Are we ready for the next one or should we pass it out? To notify your best solution. Remember the point of the exercise is as quick, uh, as many ideas as you can. Um. Okay, are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Just say that we should make a like a voice reaction measuring system. Mm -hmm. So you tell it how much you want. It starts off by saying grams or milliliters or whatever, and then you may put fill in, and, and then you can just and then it says slowly now, and then you have you know you say you, you start off by saying uh, grams, and then you would say. 300 and then you would start pouring and then it would tell you like 300 200 100 and then it would yeah, slowly go down and then you would sort of yeah but the, the problem as i see it is is how you 
it's how you measure how much it's how you measure how much there is already. I think devices, yeah, that, that's that's that, that's yeah, that's probably a good idea to tell you. But 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 how does just does, does this voice that you find out how much left? Well, that's incorporated in the weight. But so when you pour it onto the weight. Yeah, but it's volume measuring, so it has to yeah. know if it's oh, sugar yeah. or it's only volume. It's sugar or milk or oh, something. Then you should, then you should probably tell you should tell it also what you want to pour into it. So it would have incorporated all the densities of the different. So if you know you have flour, and you say flour, and then how much you and how many cups you want, and then you start. The only thing is now you're expanding the exercise because it's, it's only telling us to to volume. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's, the definition is only volume, not yeah, weight. Okay, yeah. So, it's of course, yes, it could be something where you, where it's something where you, you tilt this machine in a, in some kind of microphone or something. You tilt it sugar or something. Um, and then it know okay, sugar, the density of sugar is exactly. so much, and then boom, boom, boom. That's thing in But, but the again, in this exercise, you don't need to know because it's volume. Yeah, and if it's yeah. defined by whatever standard that you make yeah, the yeah, recipe by volume, volume. Yeah. so if you have the recipe that you need one quarter of a cup, yeah. then you don't really care about the weight. Yeah, you don't care of the weight actually. Yes. Somebody else is taking care of that. Yeah. So we don't need to care about the weight. Yeah, actually yes. Yeah. yeah. No, but you can still you can still have system that tells you oh yeah that's just a yes. cup system yeah with you the same with the same idea yeah yeah so, so. but I still if, if you know the weight of it the well if you have sort of a, you can use a <coughs> A laser measuring system. So you put on your, if you have this, and you have your thing on it, and this is one cup, two cup, and so on. And this is a light, and there is a light here, and then it knows, it it uh, it uh, it sort of uh, lights through the through the substance, and then it will know if you fill up. This much, then it's one cup, and then it can tell you one cup, two cup, three cup, four cup, and so on. Because when you when you do this, you will you will have a loss of of uh, intensity through the substance. Yeah. So maybe maybe it would be better if if, if, you, if you tell the machine which kind of thing it is. If if, if it, this is able to to measure, if it, this is not the density of sugar and milk and so on. No, but this is this but, but, is a volume measure. But, 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 but if, if it knows and, and you, you tell it, then the only thing it has to measure is, is the weight and not the volume. Yeah. But the thing so is, and then it will act like a, I don't know, like a cubic thing. So. You, you yeah, but this. But the thing is, we need to create a volume measuring apparatus, and this measures volume, and you measure weight. Yeah, but if you know the density. Yeah, but this doesn't have to know the density. But yeah. you should just come up with a lot of ideas instead of yeah. just uh, discussing the first yeah. idea we come up with. Like the we have used the first yeah. six minutes to just discuss yeah. one idea. Okay, but yeah, yeah, just, yeah but it's not even a my idea is just to kind of take like whatever it is, eight different cups or cans or spoons so you have them just in like two cup, one oh, cup, yeah. one quarter cup so you just dig down in whatever flower pot you have I uh, come up with the two ideas uh, the one is that uh, you build up um, the amount so that each of these uh, have the same and uh, you add up how much you need and therefore you place this on top of each other and then you just have to put down uh, the liquid or whatever um, in the in the right amount here um, and then you know that you have the right amount the other one is just like on a disco when you have these uh, bottles that uh, always uh, pour, pour out, out the two deciliter or centiliter of um, alcohol. Maybe you can make one that is uh, even larger and uh, place uh, on, your, on all your cool. parts and stuff like that. And that always on the first one. 
uh, always put pose out a small amount. But how do you know when you have filled up a cup as a blind person? That's that's sort of the the majority of the even, even with this you won't know if it's if it's full or, unless you start padding it to tell whether it's with a top or yeah do you, okay, you could do that. But yeah, you, you would yeah, know with this system. I know that's the problem here, but that's not the problem if you have some kind of... You could always force out. But you could also make, like you say in the discotheque, if you have all this cans here with sugar, flour, I mean, nuts, and then like a, a, a pulling device here, and then maybe this could be voice activated, or you could have different settings on this, and then... If you say you, you want one, one cup, I think that all this voice thing that you try to incorporate is, is just making the product really expensive. Yeah, but then you just could have like a a, a turning knob here with, with different what is no volume. No sense. splatter. That's what splatter is. It, it says one of the object or, or, or objectives is no splatter during operation. Easy to clean, yeah. inexpensive. Yeah, this would be super expensive. Yeah. But if you have different uh, plastic with one liter in here for flour, for sugar, or two liter, or whatever, so you have it like a bar with bottles, and then you just turn the knob here, say I want one quarter cup, and then what quarter cup comes out? Yeah, I, yeah, it's the same with the if you have when in in hotels. You have a dispenser that is one. Uh, this is uh, pins. Yeah. And then you have uh, cornflakes. Exactly. Yeah. And then when you turn it, you have one cup of cornflakes. Okay. When you yeah. Turn it again, you have another corn. Yeah. Corn so you can turn so it two, three, yeah, four so times. Yeah. So you just yeah. say, yeah, I want one, and then it wouldn't matter. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Actually, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's already invented, but <laughs> yeah. That's a system anyway. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Would it also work for uh, liquid? Yeah, you would just put on a... Yeah. yeah and then you could have a rubber seal in this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, actually, it, it wouldn't matter. It, it, it wouldn't matter if it is, yeah, what it is. Actually, yes. I, I think it, in, if it's a system, it would be fair that you have different devices for different mm -hmm. yeah. subjects. So yeah, but you, you have, have to have one, You would have one for... You would have for cornflakes and one yeah. for nuts and one for sugar, depending on... And then even you could have sort of boxes for blind people with, you know, it has this has the label on it saying yeah. saying uh, flower and they can read it and then you would just have to change, you would have the device in your kitchen, yeah. sort of mounted, and then yeah. you just put it in, turn it and then take the next thing so you, yeah. so you have no... You have some. You need some sort of easy locking system inside of this, so you don't every time you yeah. you, move it, you don't have flour yeah. everywhere. But and then uh, I still like I know this is inexpensive, but then you can add. You could add like the voice yeah. indication that's saying now it's uh, half empty or yeah, now exactly. it's quarter empty. Please uh, purchase some new because they can't see if it's filled up or not. So you could make a, oh, a deluxe they, edition. They, they, they can still feel it, how heavy it is. Yeah. But you could make it a looks edition anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good idea. This one. But yeah, and then you would, you could make it probably so you could do, so if if you wanted one thing, it could come with a nut or you could just put two in some way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's inexpensive. That's inexpensive, and then we could build on to it. And that's the system is we have different bug along the way, then yeah. it's the system. So, so, do we have any other good I think This idea is another way to do it. It's not a bad idea. It's, it's also very, that's even more inexpensive. So you just have like one cup with bottom on, and then you build up on two Yeah, but the thing up. is, you can a blind person still can't tell when it's full. So you just pour, and then you have to stick your finger in yeah. until you know. But I guess it's, it still is a system. It's not yeah. a. It's not as maybe it's not as good as this one, but it's yeah, it's still a possibility. It's a less expensive, and I guess this system is the least, least expensive. expensive. So you can have different 
cup sizes. Cup yeah. sizes, yeah. What, 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 what was those uh, lines? You just screw. Yeah, you or have one cup or and then you whatever. can screw another cup oh, on, yeah. Yeah. Cup on yeah. cup yeah. and screw another cup on and then you have and then you pair for 100, 100 grams or something. No, yeah. Uh, cups. So, it's, it's, it's so to have the ma maximum, you have eight cups up here. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you could make your system like have several in several sizes as well. But then it, it more looks like this system. Uh, and then, yeah, this one was like you have. I didn't understand that one. <coughs> you, ha you have you have like nose, a, and then you like have a, a, a disco kind of when you place a, a bottle of alcohol. Yeah. Oh, with the yeah. And then you normally get the one uh, small amount. Yeah. Out at a time, and then you have to turn the bottle down because mm -hmm. then there is a small nozzle that closes. But then you just make one here for larger, the, the, the applicable things. Yeah, but that would require you know the density of each part. Each each uh, substance yeah. because milk it's slightly different when you still have sort of a small differential yeah. but, but it comes but under precise measuring yeah, yeah so but, I but I think it would work like if you have like this thing here with, with whatever with cornflakes it's it says no, no, and then, then when you turn it out you would fill up like a corner cup so when you and, and you just had to yeah. do it eight times yeah. So yeah, I think it doesn't yeah. really matter how no. the density is. Maybe you should be a little more patient with one. Yeah. So you could turn it like eight times. It would work. Yeah, I think it's, that, yeah. A, it's a, like this is. I think maybe that's more flexible. Might, might be a better idea actually. Yeah, because yeah. then you just can place your your boxes in whatever way. This one kind of needs to be fixed. Yeah, you, but you still, as a blind person, have to have sort of difference saying this. What about if it, yeah. This one I fill up with uh, flour. Yeah. You so you could have different devices here. Yeah, yeah, but no, no. But the thing is, if you have the same containers, then you can have, then you don't only need one device. Oh yeah. yeah. You could also have some kind of cylinder or something, some kind of perhaps an open cylinder, where you fill uh, this, this, uh, the thing in here, yeah. and then there, there could be some kind of uh, called a pillar or something where you could put put a plate in or something every hundred. Or something. Yeah. Then you fill it up, and then, up, and then I scroll up to here or something, and then now you tell me, okay, I just want 300 grams. Then I put something in here. Another fun thing would be, and, and, the, and the rest I just put it back in. Yeah, sort of using the same idea, you could you could make because like a thing here that has bills. The, the, the measuring device, you even like. That like rings you when you fill it up. The, the way you use it is so like you when, you, have a when you fill this much up, the bell rings, and, and then the next bell rings, and then the next bell rings, and then the next bell rings. So you put yeah, half a liter and you put it in there, and then it said uh, two cups of flour. So you, this don't one don't you, don't, flour, you, you, you only have to count. So you don't need to store yeah. it. Yeah, 100, 300, and then you. But how how do you count it? You just have the cylinder, and then you say, one. You have something where you can feel where those rolls are. I think like it's not that good. Then you just one. Two, three, some bones. Oh, so you would have to feel. Yeah, okay. And then you just count uh, how many. And then you know it's in your, you in your down brain down that it's 150 or something. You know it's something hard, so it shouldn't go down. <coughs> but then, you have to, then, then, then you can have more of those. Then you can have another one, a smaller one, which is 25 or something. Yeah, I don't really see how you how what, with the reel does it make a sound or how do you how do you know when it's filled? When they're yeah. um, so you first you set the plan yeah actually so actually you, you don't know but <laughs> but you, you but you could fill it up up to here and then and then you put some kind of thing in here and the rest of this. Or not. Then, and then you can open down here and... Oh, and oh and so you did sort of, you know, so like, a, like the magic trick where you saw a lady open. Yeah, actually you put something in here and then you could open something down here. And all of this stuff is yeah, okay. yeah. put in the... Yeah. Where it should be and all of this and all the, the rest is captured in here and you just put it back mm -hmm. where yeah. it came from. Then you, you could have another one for 25 grams or... 
each other 50 people. So on if, if you need... This is a good idea, I think it would be a bit difficult to construct. However, that's the only sort of downside. Yeah. This is sort of the fun way to do it. Yeah, for example, and this one is. You mix but it's difficult with the bills, I think. You want to mix them. Yeah, but you don't have to. You just have to make something that makes it either. You can make different. Like this is one. This makes like a sound where you, when the, it hits the the, the first. Yeah, and then another sound and then another sound. Or you can do the same sound twice. You know. Like with with reels, music. Yeah. So you mean like when you pass the first and the next and the next. Uh, yeah, but it's how milk. you mount so you those here. Yeah. You pull half of a liter of the milk, you yeah. open it, it goes but down. Yeah, but it's also difficult how you, you uh, make those wax, yeah. yeah. you open it, it goes down, you close it. The, yeah, but it should be something for what, about like that, that you can measure count, and then make it 100 or something. Or this one that's idiot proof. This one that's idiot proof. Yeah, this is one that's idiot But that's also about counting. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, all of them are about it. Like counting it in some way. Yeah. Same container for and then, uh, and then it's, I think yeah. it's measuring and a good idea to have together. some smaller things, yeah. even if, yeah. if no matter if it's yeah. this or this, this one, this one, you should have something smaller, which yeah. both, both can take 100, 200, 325, 50. Yeah. But actually, I, uh, well, another way to do it is going back to what you were saying. Is actually just to make it a normal weight. Okay, there's uh, two minutes to go to so start thinking. And then, uh, like this, this is flour, full in flour, flour. Yeah. and then it will tell you stop yeah. when you have quarter cup or whatever. Because it would know how much the weight would yeah. be. Yeah. And this would would be quite universal and quite easy because you can make this as big as possible, so you don't have to spill it, and then you can can try yeah, it. I was thinking because we have to choose the one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like this one and this one. Yeah, yeah this one is this one. This is the same. It's just different that, yeah. that yeah. you have. Yeah. You have a container, and then you have all your your stuff in different containers. So when the blind come home, put all the when they bought. So they already have it pre-arranged, yeah, and so then this could be marked with this. this. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they look like each other, I think. Yeah. The, the, the basic principle is actually the same yeah. in all of them. Yeah. So if we need it to be inexpensive, I would say it would be this. Yeah, this. I think yeah. there's not yeah. a lot of difference between no. these two. Yeah. No, not really. This is slightly more... Uh, uh, this is more stationary, and this is more... Move over a long wall. Yeah, it's yeah, sort it's of the same principles. Like yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's actually all the same principles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, depending but on. Yeah. And actually, I, I like this one because this one you could build out to be a fancy deluxe system. Yeah, on the whistle and that. This one would be very nice. Yeah. In the it would be easy when they come home from shopping, or anyone would just put it in, put it in, and then it would be there. Yeah. Yeah, and if this is mounted to the wall yeah. in some way, or mounted in some way, then you can just change these containers, or you can have the same okay. container. It should just be can you, uh, stop now, yeah. please? Okay. This one is nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah.